Hoko Life, a village life simulation game released in September of 2022. Now you can call me crazy if you want, but I think I've seen this game before. I hate to say it, but it seems based on the trailer and the screenshots I've seen that this game is being advertised as an alternative to everybody's favorite anthropomorphic neighbor simulator. But I don't think it'd be fair to judge this book by its title screen, so let's jump into Hoko Life and see exactly what this game is about. I have to be honest, based on just the title screen, I'm already pretty impressed. I was expecting this to be much more- Oh, yeah, we're Xbox 360 avatars. I mean, it's still pretty cute, but I wasn't expecting this. The customization isn't that great, but it is half decent with a handful of hairstyles to choose from. It also lets you pick basically any color you want for your eyes and hair. So let's just choose this hair here, move this little slider, and bam. Pennywise. After a brief train ride where you're falling asleep for some reason, the game drops you off at a train station. Making your way down this path, you eventually come to this building and- Oh my god, what the fuck is that? Mama called the pastor. I'm seeing demons. It's lovely to see a new face in town. What's your name, dearie? Huh, that's a good question. Vil Ager. What a unique and original name. So after talking to these horrifying sentient beanie babies, they learn of your homelessness and kindly offer you a place to stay in the meantime. Now look, I'd hate to start drawing comparisons this early, but there was a line to cross and we have egregiously crossed it. For starters, this game starts identically to the original Animal Crossing. How did I expertly deduce that, you may ask? Well, let's just think about it. We take a train to a new village where we have no place to stay and no money to our name. We're then offered a place to live temporarily and in return, we end up helping around town under the supervision of a shopkeeper. Also, they're animals. Huh, now that you mention it, actually, this kind of feels similar. That's fucking Animal Crossing. <laughs> Not to mention, the music also feels oddly familiar, and if we listen to these two tracks, maybe you'll see what I mean. It's also kind of awkward because the animal neighbors don't actually look at you when they're talking. They just kind of stare off into space most of the time. It's kind of creepy. So again, much like the GameCube's Animal Crossing, the first mission we're given is to introduce ourselves to each of the town's residents. At this point, I also learned that the player's walking animation doesn't change speed with our movement speed, so we can just kinda sprint while walking super slowly. What's that, May? Your scarf! Don't worry, I'm on the way. I I'm almost there. Well, I might as well go and talk to the other villager while I'm over here. Wait a minute. Did he just get pushed back when I talked to him? So if I just, oh my God, I could push him out of bounds. Now that's what I call game design. I mean, it's not very good game design, but it was made by a team of game designers. So it counts. Oh, great wall pig. What is your wisdom? We fun this game on Steam, hurry! So in order to fix our little homeless problem, Moss hooks you up with an ax to clear the debris around town. Oh, and if I haven't mentioned it, Moss is basically the wish version of Tom Nook. He even makes jokes alluding to his shady business practices. This feels like a reference to all the jokes depicting Tom Nook as a mob leader, but I don't want to insinuate that this game's copying Animal Crossing. That would be simply untrue. So to fix your house up, which is currently in people who enter here never leave condition, you put down a donation box where the required materials are placed. Once the house is repaired, the whole town gathers around to- Can we get this thing out of the camera? It's fucking kind of ruining my moment here. Anyway, leaving your house, another cutscene follows where- are you fucking kidding me? The entire screen is blocked by this other house. I can't even see the creepy characters anymore. Actually, you know what? Just leave it there. Now on our first day officially living here, the villagers request that we liven things up with some decorative items in town. So we talk to Sally who then teaches us how to craft items. Awesome, I'm not even here a week and I'm already their decorative bitch. And much to my surprise, the crafting system feels oddly familiar. Speaking of familiar features though, this game's equivalent to Nook Miles is a system they call Mayor Merits. Which is kind of odd because I'm not entirely sure who the mayor is. It's not me, is it? Are we really about to go New Leaf up in this bitch? Mayor Merits, huh? I mean, that sounds pretty cool. I wonder what kind of stuff we can unlock by completing these challenges though. From what I can tell, these merits basically provide an upgrade path that can be completed over time, and doing so rewards you with stuff like backpack expansions, a camera, and... Is that what I think it is? Do you have to unlock the option to sprint? Through mayor merits? You know what? I'll just let this one go. It's ridiculous, but it certainly can't get any worse. Wait, why did I just stop sprinting? Are, are those sweat droplets? Did they limit sprinting in this game? All right, you know, that's it. I'm gonna say it. Seven circles of hell, not even enough. We need a whole second tier of hell circles, and your ass is the first and only tenant. 
So to unlock this merit, I just placed some easy to craft garbage in town. And by that, I mean I crafted fences to imprison this guy because, you know, fuck it. That's right. I'm projecting on you. And in about 15 seconds, I'm about to be projecting your head off with this fucking axe. So not long after getting situated, new faces start appearing in town. Rosa here is a real estate agent who will set up houses for new villagers. As long as she doesn't have to do anything and we do all of the work. For the most part, the NPCs in this game feel soulless and unresponsive. That's so emotionitative. Now to the developer's credit, there is a villager that I love to death. This is Yara and they're, well, they're something. They're obsessed with insects and when talking about them, they can get a little too existential. You know, I study them. Study what? <laughs> they give the player a bug net and sends us off to catch some critters at our leisure. Oh, check it out, we caught a peacock. Now, hold on, let me correct you there. Uh, common mistake, no big deal. That is actually a butterfly. I hope you like butterflies though, because well, that's the only bug that exists in this game. Yep, the devs decided, fuck it, butterflies are good enough. What about acquiring new villagers? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. In this game, you go to the inn at a specific time and there you'll find a new potential neighbor. Before you can do this though, you need a house. And if you do build a house, make sure you have a bridge to get home because I didn't. Well, I guess we could invite a new villager to live with us. I went through the trouble of stranding myself on an island to make it happen, so we might as well. There definitely won't be some super sad and depressive backstory at a completely inappropriate time. Hey, check it out. It's an old man dog. I bet he'd make a great neighbor. I should have vis visited this village a long time ago. Back when Esther... Back when Esther what? You are not about to tell me in this Dollar Tree Animal Crossing spinoff that this old man dog is about to trauma dump about his dead fucking wife. Esther would have loved it here. Yep, she is definitely dead. It just feels like these characters were meant to be more fleshed out and they decided to substitute personality with, well, this guy's dead wife. It's really unfortunate because a cheap Animal Crossing alternative would have been awesome, but instead we got fucking this. The last thing I want to touch on is the progression, because realistically, that's like 90% of this game. Rather than doing fun stuff like changing up your island or interacting with unique villagers, you're basically just spending your time farming, like a farming simulator. That game already exists though. Oh, but wait a minute, so does this one. It's called fucking Animal Crossing. The map expands far beyond what you can first explore, but unlike Animal Crossing, where practically all of your island can be explored within an hour of starting, Hoko life just kind of drags on like for a long time. You gain access to the rest of the island as you complete merits and obtain certain items, which provides some form of long-term goal, but I also don't wanna wait. I wanna play all of it right now. What do you mean I have to play the game to play the rest of the game? What kind of game design is this? In the long run, and by long run, I mean a four second run before recharging stamina, I feel like this game just misses the mark by trying to be different from Animal Crossing. And in order to achieve that, they removed all of the features that made this specific business model work. So in the end, Hoko Life was a great concept in theory, but didn't live up to the demand it was trying to supply. If that demand was butterflies, on the other hand, they got plenty of those. Well, that was an interesting experience. I'm going back to Animal Crossing.